From K2 News, this is breaking news. If you believe damaging those businesses or trashing a library on a university campus will impact events in the Middle East, then you are delusional. Strong words from the mayor tonight after police clear pro-Palestine protesters from the Portland State University Library. At least a dozen people arrested. Police say future arrests are possible. We do have a number of images of people who left the library. PSU's president calling this a traumatic event for everyone on campus. Of course we support the free speech rights of our students who feel so passionate about the horrors of war and the killings of innocents in Gaza. But we must take care of all of our students. And good evening. Thank you for joining us for K2 News at 5, everybody. I'm Steve Dunn. And I'm Deborah Knapp. Tonight, protesters remain on campus after police cleared them from Millar Library earlier today. We do have live team coverage for you, beginning with K2's Thunvi Varma. And Thunvi, how many people are still out there tonight? Steve, it looks like at least 100. I want to walk you through what's going on right now. A protester just took a match and burnt down the police tape for the second time. Now I want to show you the crowd going this way. You can see they're quite energetic. They're clapping and they've been chanting different iterations, asking the PSU president to step down from her role. You can see that the protesters have formed what looks like a standoff line with police. They are right up against that tape, which they've been cutting down repeatedly. You can see it's on the floor floor because of all of the times that it's been pulled down. And like we showed you earlier, there are still water bottles on the ground. Police officers have been dumping them out because protesters have been throwing them at them. You can see that there's students scattered. Now, not all of these students are protesters. Some are spectators. We will be here for the next few hours, and we will give you the very latest. I'm live at PSU, Thunvi Verma, K2 News. All right, we'll talk to you soon, Thunvi. Thank you. We want to go straight to brand new video from inside the library. You can see it is trashed. There is graffiti all over the walls with messages like property destruction is not violence and end colonization. Paint is all over the floor. Hallways are lined with tents and it looks like the protesters were prepared to spend quite a bit of time there with what looked like a pharmacy in one area of the library. We are continuing to look at the video and we'll bring you new images throughout the night. This was the moment, as we show you, when police made entry into the library. They say there was soap or slick substance on the floor, likely meant to make it difficult for them to get in. Our team coverage continues now with K2 Shelby Slaughter. And Shelby, break down the timeline for us of how this all went down. Well, Steve, this all started at 6 a.m. That's when police arrived right here on campus, and we watched for several hours as officers walked inside and outside of this library. Turns out police were also inside clearing the library. Then just before 9, we saw this. A couple dozen protesters running from inside the library. One or two were arrested, but many got away. Police say by 9.30, the area was completely clear of protesters. We encountered a, uh, a lot of barricades, uh, a lot of uh, things put in our way to try to slow us down. Barricades like wooden pallets, protesters had been stockpiling throughout the week and stolen goalposts from a nearby field. Officers uh, entered the building and uh, went in an elevator to the top of the building, secured the roof, secured the top floors, and then slowly, carefully, deliberately uh, working their way down, clearing the building as they went. Sergeant Kevin Allen with Portland Police says while securing the building, two officers walked away with minor injuries. One officer was uh, sprayed with a fire extinguisher. Uh, the person who sprayed the officer with the fire extinguisher was arrested. Officers also found several improvised weapons, but did say none of those weapons were used on police. Uh, there were uh, paint balloons, there were spray bottles full of ink, um, and a note on there that said they were supposed to be deployed at officers. University President Ann Cudd saying today it didn't have to come to this and reiterated that they gave everyone inside the library the opportunity to come out peacefully. We gave students in the library the opportunity to leave without the threat of expulsion or suspension. Sergeant Allen says at this hour, crews are still working on the library. 
and will be a work in progress for days to come. And we've also learned that four additional officers were hurt in that initial clearing, bringing the total number to six. Reporting live from PSU campus, I'm Shelby Slaughter, K2 News. Shelby, thank you. Our team coverage continues now with K2's Emily Gersh. And Emily, you spoke to the mayor, the police chief, and the district attorney about potential criminal charges for anybody arrested. And Emily, so far 12 people are in custody. Four of them are students, but that number could go up, right? That's right, Stephen Deb. Well, uh, Police Chief Bob Day and Multnomah County District Attorney uh, Mike Schmidt says that this is far from over. They said that investigators will be going through surveillance footage to identify others who were able to elude police. Tool at our disposal to make sure that people are held accountable. District Attorney Mike Schmidt says 12 arrests is just the beginning. Potentially dozens of other arrests are pending as investigators analyze video, seek witness testimony, and collect other forms of evidence. They say potential charges include criminal trespassing, vandalism, assault, and theft. The protesters that ran outside of the building this morning, what actually happened there? Were any of them arrested? Yeah, I believe so. The some were arrested, Kevin. Yes. Was, I mean, I know that, yes, some were arrested. How many of that, I do not know. I also know that we're actively distributing information with pictures and photos of those that were not arrested but were seeking to take into custody. But there were some arrests made, yes. Did officers chase those protesters and about how many ran out of the building? I do not know about the pursuit or lack of. And in terms of numbers, I've heard numbers near 50. Um, but certainly, you know, we're going to have to review the video to see. Now, of the 12 arrested this morning, two are charged with assaulting police officers. One allegedly sprayed a police officer with a fire extinguisher, and another allegedly hit an officer with an object. I'll have more on the steps that police are taking to track down these suspects coming up at 6. For now, we're live in downtown Portland. Emily Gersh, K2 News. And we'll see you back here at 6 o'clock, Emily. Thank you. And Police Chief Bob Day also spoke about the criminal behavior and how it detracts from the protest message and what they're trying to accomplish. Listen to this. We all have deeply held beliefs, whether that be about conditions around the world or right here in the city of Portland. And when we see the activity that we've seen over the last few days, or we're even going back to 2020, um, we lose the opportunity to bring about real change. And I know that Portlanders at their core want to be about real change. Let's continue our team coverage now with K2's Victor Park. And Victor, we heard from several students today who were not taking part in the protest. How did this impact them? And are they glad to see the demonstrators gone? That is exactly what we've been hearing from a lot of those students, Deb and Steve. In fact, we are on the eastern edge of the campus. This is along Harrison Street behind me. It's pretty much where we've been watching students go in and out of buildings, cafes, and just going about their business. But they are limited to where they can go. Of course, as you know, the campus is closed and this is their limit right over here, the yellow tape that you're seeing. But I also want to point out that these yellow tapes have been constantly tied together, not really being effective because as you see over here, they've also been ripping it. This, this, this one just happened within the last few minutes. And of course, a lot of these students also have been spectating around here, curious to see what has happened. Uh, many of them, of course, haven't been on campus also the past few days, but we did talk to one student and uh, he tells us that he is frustrated, especially during uh, midterms. Like, it's frustrating. I kind of just want to get done with my classes, of course. Um, and the fact that the university has had to close um, the library and all of the buildings. I'm probably just as confused as anyone else is at the moment. I mean, I'm just hoping that at least within next week we can probably get school moving again because people's educations are very, very much needed to be prioritized as well. And as we come back out here live, we're still waiting to hear more from the university. Meanwhile, of course, this is uh, pretty much how far students could get. And then you see the protesters all the way down there. Police line, you can hear them cheering right now, the police line, the skirmish line, it, uh, uh, moving away from the protesters. And they're all cheering right now. A lot of those officers moving away. They are now following the officers over there. 
This is heading towards the library. In that library, we've been watching uh, what appears to be maybe you could say construction workers, if you will, uh, removing a lot of the pallets. But you can see the crowd moving westbound towards the library, following those officers as they retreat. A lot of those officers have been here for hours, many of them uh, now stopping. Again, they are wearing uh, that riot gear. We've been watching them all morning long throughout the day, and they continue to retreat. They are now forming a small skirmish line and then continuing to move westbound as the crowd continues to move towards them. Of course, we're going to be out here throughout the day, and now you see also some people following them, crossing this yellow tape, having no regard for the line that has been surrounding this library since 6 o'clock this morning. But we got to say now that crowd continues to move westward, and now they are starting to hit on some sort of drum. Uh, we don't know if they're hitting any uh, pounding on the glass or anything, but you could see them, you could hear them loud and clear, all of them cheering, uh, celebrating that the officers are leaving now. We'll keep you posted here on KTL. I'll send it back to you. All right, Victor, thank you very much. I want to go back up to Thunvi Varma. I can see right in front of the camera now. Thunvi, can you hear me? Can you hear us, Thunvi? Yeah, I know her earpiece just fell out there, so maybe she gets that back in. Uh, Thunvi, can you hear us from the studio? Right now, we want to show you this building. You can see that there's students. Oh. Their students, they're banging on this building. They were following police officers as police officers went into this building. You can see their students standing and screaming, free Palestine. They are banging on this building as we speak. They are running, they're screaming police now. You can see there's quite a bit of tension. You can hear the free Palestine chants here. Police are inside this building. Students are coming down the steps now. Thunby, can you get a sense of what building that is? We are looking at the building right now. Let me get a good title for you. This building looks to be the Peter Scott Center, the Viking Pavilion. Students are throwing up the police tape. Hey, Thun B, uh, any idea, it's, it's hard to estimate crowd sizes, I know that, but any thoughts on how many people might still be down there right now? Steve, it's getting a little bit hard to hear you right now. It's very loud. Students are chanting very loud, and they are banging on buildings right now. You can hear the Free Palestine. You can hear people clapping. And you can see this student or protester is wearing police tape. He is wearing it around his neck. They ran after police as police were leaving the scene. And now they are dancing. You can see they're dancing in circles because the police have left. It'll be interesting to watch the as cheering we, continues. We, we watch this video here. Uh, the police presence, whether it will grow as we get to, toward... Uh, Sunset uh, tonight down there, Portland State University, as that uh, protest continues tonight. Place. And as Thunby mentioned, they haven't left campus. They have gone inside the student mm -hmm. union building. So we'll see. We'll continue to monitor the developments mm -hmm. this evening. We're going to continue our coverage uh, right now. From K2 News, this is breaking news. Back to our breaking news now. Let's go back to Portland State University. Things and students on the move and a whole lot of folks are making sub movement. We've seen uh, fences go down. K2's Thunby Varma is watching it all. What can you tell us, Thunby? That's right, Steve. Fences have gone down. You can look right next to me. These were all propped up, and students were jumping on them to put them down. Now, if you see, look, students are going back into the library. If you pan over this way, you can see students are once again occupying the library. They're holding signs, and they're headed right back in there. They're forming a line. And earlier, they were not just jumping on the fence, but they were climbing on the dumpsters and jumping on the dumpsters. We have seen a couple more police officers come out. This all started happening as a group of police officers left. I'm trying to listen into what they're saying. There's some sort of chant. Uh, a protester is gesturing to the crowd towards the library. You can see that there's a protester right there gesturing. Now there's a student coming up on this fence. She's standing on this fence. You can hear they're oh. reacting. 
Thunby, I'm going to let you continue to monitor what's happening in your location. We want to get a different vantage point from K2's Victor Park. So, Victor, what are you seeing? Yeah, from our vantage point, I mean, I got to say, police have lost control of this area. I think it's safe to say that because uh, obviously they have retreated. But we saw all these uh, people just storm this area and started, as Dunby said, tearing down the gates. It's a little ironic because they had built something earlier, you know, sort of a makeshift wall around the area. They kind of had that with this gate, essentially, even though they didn't put this gate up. Um, but then they take, they ended up taking it, all of it down. Uh, pretty aggressive. Started stomping on it and just started yelling. And many of them, of course, covering their faces. They don't want to be seen on camera as they have been doing the past several days. Uh, but again, uh, they have pretty much taken over this area surrounding the library. And now we could see some of them climbing uh, some of those, I guess, uh, dumpsters that has a lot of that property that they had placed inside of the building. And they are retrieving it. They are taking some of those uh, boards over there, if you will, and putting it back out. Potentially, uh, they may try to create this wall again. Hopefully, we don't see a repeat of what occurred the past few days. But yeah, we are watching them carry some of those cones, some of those items. It's been very interesting the way they have organized this. Uh, it's essentially getting ready for to stay here for days because we've seen the things that they have inside. I mean, food, they've been ready with this. I mean, it's kind of what we've been watching in other parts of the country where they have tents dedicated to PPE, they have tents dedicated to uh, any medical issues, and here they are retrieving some of those items that they origin originally had placed inside of the library. All of those items were removed by uh, people dressed in vet and uh, with vests, um, and we saw them leave just before the police left. And now we're seeing some of those people above or on top of those dumpsters removing uh, just umbrellas I see. I saw a Palestine flag and a bunch of other items, whatever they could find. And now they are also re removing some of those gates. So this is on the north side of the library where much of this is occurring right now. Uh, no more chants that we are hearing. I know earlier we were hearing that not much of that now the focus has shifted onto retrieving the items that has been disposed uh, a lot of these items of course they've been relying on in order to stay here uh, it's almost as if they've been you know ready to survive the apocalypse inside here with the amount of items that they uh, have had in the ready mm -hmm. a lot of it of course has been accumulated over the past few days that they have been staying here and here we are now at this point where again it appears that police have lost control of the area. As soon as they retreated, we saw all these people uh, started taking action in whatever fashion they could. Uh, sir, and a lot of it really with aggression. Yes, I'm sir, I'm sorry, Victor, interrupt you. Certainly uh, not the news that Portland State University nor the Portland Police Bureau wanted to hear at this point uh, that if indeed the students are moving back into Millar Library as uh, we get closer to a sunset tonight, no question about it. And this crowd seems to be pretty revved up as they, we see them throwing uh, wood out of the big uh, garbage bins right now. And folks are, are certainly gathering. Let me ask you, Victor, do you see any police presence at all? I know uh, we had heard from Thun V that uh, they had moved into the uh, Peter Stott building nearby. Do you see any police out there at all? I'm doing a whole entire 180 turn, 360. Nope, nothing. No police on either end of uh, this library. Not at all. Not even a police car. Uh, yeah, I don't see any uh, police. Okay, so we do, let me see. No, those are other protesters all dressed in black coming in from the west side. Yeah, not officers. No off, uh, presence of any uh, police officers. I, I know Dunby has a better vantage point of where they went. I'm on the opposite end. So I don't know if they are still inside of that building or if they have retreated okay. further out of the area. Victor, we're going to let you continue to monitor the developments there taking place on the PSU campus. In the meantime, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back after this.
get right back to the PSU campus. Uh, Thun V Varma, what do you see? Thun V, can you hear me? So we're going to show you what's going on. Students are putting up a barrier once again by the library. These were the barriers that were put up earlier. Now that police have left, they are picking them back up from the floor where they had pushed them down, and they're putting them back up and going in towards the library. You can see them filing on the other side of that fence. Earlier, they were taking things out of the dumpster that were taken out from their previous barrier, and it looks like they're setting up once again to occupy the library. We will keep our eyes on the situation. You can see that they're picking up all sorts of, there's a wooden fence that they're picking up. There's a piece of wood that a protester is holding right over there. It looks like they're building another barrier. We will be here for the next few hours and we will let you know what happens next. I'm live at the PSU Library, Thunvi Verma, K2 News. Thank you, Thunvi. And again, just within the past 15 minutes, we saw police actually retreat from the line that they were holding in that area and walk into uh, the Peterstadt Center and Viking Pavilion. And ever since then, we saw a group of uh, the protesters rush toward back to the library where they've now re-entered. And I'm sure folks at home wondering about the police strategy. What is it at this point? Uh, we'll certainly find out in the, hopefully in the next hour or so. We'll continue to keep an eye on things, bring you updates throughout the evening tonight. You can also track developments on our website, k2.com, and our social media pages. More news uh, coming up at 6 o'clock tonight. We'll see you then, folks.